and let's see what there is to see. Star Citizen testing 4.0 and server meshing could finally mean more stability. Your friend DG here, well, I've been talking stability since 20... <laughs> 2019 is when I really started to engage on the stability issues. 2020, 2021, every year I keep talking about the stability, this elusive stability. And it's nice to start seeing content creators you know, talk about this. This is, this is what needs to be talked about. And what will give us the stability? Well, the most important tech feature for this game, server meshing. Okay. A reimagined evolution of what dynamic server meshing currently is and what cloud Imperium is trying to do. Let's, let's de -jankify it. Right. Stability. Stability. Ask most players playing Star Citizen what they want. And the number one thing that seems to pop up is stability. stability. And last week, the testing season of 4.0 began with up yes. to 1,000 player shards using server meshing. While the player cap may not go that high when 4.0 hits live, server meshing is arguably the single biggest blocker to the game, reaching further stability. Stability. And it is the number one most important make or break feature for this game like quite literally if they don't do it it's gonna be a huge letdown it's gonna be a huge disappointment for me but i'll live i'll live until then i'm gonna be a fan i'm gonna root for them to do it this is the way this is the way the other way is to naysay every single fucking thing and be a grima worm tongue whispering negative shit into theoden's ear like that's pretty much what it would be anything else is that either you're a fan or you're a grima worm tongue like I, <laughs> while there are other things server meshing is big as mentioned here by one of the folks leading the initiative uh for sure like the the most immediate gain there is gonna is server meshing for sure like we've seen in our playtest significant uh frame rate increase across the board for areas this is all bound on entity count and also physical entity count. So server meshing is the from the top is going to reduce that count by a lot because you have way less areas to simulate. So less entities to simulate means uh, you know um, the that the overall wait time across the frame will be better. So let's talk about. I saw this and I was a little bit more encouraged after watching uh, Benoit. Um, he's a pretty smart cookie. And uh, I think I think in this instance, Chris actually put the right guy in charge. So it's just going to take a long time. About these server meshing tests, star citizen stability, and where we go from here. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Now the first thing to note is that recently the roadmap update brought the Zeus ES and CL into the 3.24 branch of updates, along with the new MFD UI updates. This makes it pretty clear that while server meshing is in testing, 4.0 itself will definitely not be going to the live servers by CitizenCon or likely IAE in late November. Thus, we're seeing new features and ships moved up from the 4.0 update that don't need to go out during that time. And we'll know about that second deadline of IAE for sure whenever CIG admits to what update the Polaris is coming in, since, you know. Uh, so the Polaris is going to be flight ready, fully released at IAE this year. Not 4.0. But IAE. whatever the what, patch whatever, number yeah. for, for Invictus is. Yeah. What happens if you don't make it? It will come out at IAE. What happens if you don't make it, Ben? He's my boss, it will come out IAE. <laughs> <laughs> so we are possibly looking at a December live release of 4.0 with a possible subsequent 4.0.1 update to stabilize things towards the end of the month, if we're pretty lucky. This could mean a few things for the game going into the new year. There are a lot of fears that 4.0 will release and the whole studio will go on break, leaving the game in shambles. While server meshing might enable- It's happened before. <laughs> like, these things happen. You know, it's not anything new to us. Uh, if that happens, I mean, hey, 
It happens, man. Like, more stability in the game by offloading a lot of processes from a single right, server dude, in the right. longer term, that first launch could be pretty rough. But there are a couple different reasons this scenario might not happen. First, CIG understands how important 4.0 is. This is easily the most important release in the game's history. While 3.0 was also a big moment introducing Planet Tech and many of the systems that have been updated this year, the optics, size of the community, and attention the game gets were nowhere near what they are now. Additionally, 4.0 has been anticipated for 7 plus years after so many different messages about it's coming next year and don't worry we're on the road for Pyro. <laughs> Now that it's actually in testing and a realistic goal for the company, I think they recognize all those false alarms have built up a lot of expectations. With server meshing finally be The entire project is built up expectations that eventually get destroyed and shattered and stomped on and then the cycle then reboots and then expectations stack on top of themselves once again only to get smashed down and, and, and every time it happens, more gets built. That's what's happening. Oh, <laughs> and then there's a little bit left and then, oh, <laughs> and then there's a little more than there was before. And then, oh, <laughs> and each time the things that get done are more and more and more. Welcome to fucking game development. <laughs> well, welcome to game development. Beginning public testing, we are in for a long haul of various tests and waves to get the game to a playable state in a server meshed environment. We could be looking at three plus whole months of this back and forth testing. For that reason, the worst case scenario at this point is looking like an open PTU launch in December while the live servers remain on 324 to allow for even more testing at the end of that three plus months. This would be similar to the 3.18 launch a couple years ago. Hopefully not the live release part, that hurt. But rather with anybody being able to access the patch if they want starting in December. For many of you, this doesn't count as 4.0 coming out in quarter four, but like I said, this seems like the bad path now. Then there are also the hot fixes we could see. While CIG might get 4.0 into a good enough state and want to go live in December, we have actually seen December patches get small updates to fix bugs and stabilize before the new year. Specifically, 3.12 had a bug fix patch drop on Christmas Eve in order to make things a bit better before the offices closed for the holidays. Shout out to the devs who were working that late, and I'm sure this won't solve every problem, but specifically the things that make a patch unbearable do sometimes get figured out within a couple of weeks of that live release. This is because even after all the PTU testing cycles, there's nothing quite like releasing an update to the entire community. As the CTO and head of Turbulent Studios, Benoit Beausejourd suggested in a recent Star Citizen. Thank you, Gator. Definitely needed. The channel does have two copyright strikes on it. Monetization uh, through the YouTube platform is at a level, like a fart level. So thank you very much for that, Gator. I appreciate that. And by the way, it's Benoit Bessejour. Okay, Space Tomato. You have smooth, silky ASMR tones, but you're not pronouncing stability, right? First off, we all know it's stability. And now I'm I'm seeing that you're destroying Benoit's name, Benoit Bessejou. Okay, the de jeu okay, needs to be. Damn it, Space Tomato! Damn it! I don't want to teach Space Tomato things. It's, his voice is so silky and smooth. And live regarding 3.24. Um, some of them work well, you know, on internal builds, and then when we get real players on it. There's always something new. Um, All this being said, though, it is in your best interest to still expect a rough and drawn out launch for 4.0, just to set yourself up for whatever might happen. In my opinion, 4.0 is too important <laughs> to patch to not have a smooth release. Smooth-ish. So the next couple of months are very crucial for the game, but always expect the worst. It's just being safe. And no Every month is crucial for the game, by the way. Every single month that we've been on this journey is crucial.
no matter how the launch goes, server meshing in 4.0 being the top priorities for the next major launch thus mean the top priorities for the future of the game are improved stability and a higher player count. And these are two of the most important things the game needs to be an environment the player the stability more than the player count at this point but the two will actually come and coalesce and synergize together as the dynamic server meshing tech gets introduced and starts working fingers crossed you'll start to see uh player rates go up the amount of players in the game go up per server and then you'll start to see more stability come in which stability is where it's at which is again directly related to the dynamic server meshing. So again, that is at the top of the list. That is that that is the pillar of it all, right fingers? It's the pillar. <laughs> Players who actually enjoy Star Citizen can have a better time in. Better AI, more reliable physics, game systems that rely on a solid back end, elevators, trains and missions that can finally be updated after years of waiting. This milestone allows the company to start renovating and improving a lot of what has been holding the game experience back. And with the Zeus ships moved to 3.24.2, we now basically have confirmation that update will come after IAE. But how is that early testing of server meshing going so far with the 1000 players in a shard together? Before we do talk about the server mesh tests going on, it's good to talk about the big change that these tests were waiting for, as talked about again by Benoit. RMQ, which is the replication layer messaging service that keeps everything in the game up to date across all meshed servers, has actually been running in the background of the game for almost all of 3.24 testing over the last few months. This confirmation is good news for the back end of the game, as it's actually been running quite well. Kinda. Mostly. And it now runs the 3.24 live game, which you may or may not have noticed improved stability in. As for the server meshing tests, the biggest difference we are seeing with these tests compared to the server meshing tests earlier this year is, like I said, the implementation of the RMQ. I won't go into detail about what this is, but on surface level, it's an iteration of the way the game communicates with the back end to explain what needs to happen and when, regarding player actions, game events, etc. Now, I didn't get to take place in these tests themselves. But I watched a couple of them, and from what I've been told, the game performed quite well up until around 350 players were in the shard together. Now, quite well is relevant. At 350 player instances, the game was mostly playable, which is a good place to be compared to where we are now, but nowhere near any MMO aspirations. At that point, things were still a bit rough, and some of the systems that were used to being broken were still kind of broken. There's a lot that needs to be updated to fit into the game along with server meshing. But at this point, we could probably see a new star system put into place, that being Pyro, with 200 players, as well as an additional 200 in Stanton. This would immediately double the amount of players you are used to seeing in a single star system, while adding yet another one with the same amount of players, creating more gameplay opportunities. Yes! You're not gonna hate me! This test also reportedly showed 30 frames per second tick rate on the server, which if you watched my video at the beginning of this year about server meshing is one of the biggest shortcomings of things like AI performance and general game stability. It has also been repeated by various devs throughout the year. For 4.0 with server meshing, we expect higher server frame rates. So the idea is that you'll get a much more engaging AI experience but like I said, things weren't perfect. The transit system refactor still seems to be needed as trains and elevators were pretty unstable. And then it's horrible, horrible is the word for the mission system wasn't even functional, showing that the refactor for that is also not performing well enough for testing. So there are some issues here and there that need to be figured out over the coming months. While the goal is improved stability, the first step is just making sure the game runs as well as it does on this entirely new back end. Much like with persistent entity streaming in 3.18, the goal is not just to nail a dramatic improvement with the first iteration, but more to reach the same level of performance with some improvements here and there over what we had with the previous system, that being 3.24. But we're seeing a clear increase in player concurrency as well as game server tick rate compared to the live environment, and we aren't entirely aware of the limiting bounds here. This first test, like I said, is taking part in just the Stanton system, with three to four servers for 350 players. 
it's arguable that more servers would need to be added given more geometric space in a different star system. So this could very easily scale up, but I don't know these things well enough to say with any certainty. What I have been told is that past this 350 to 400 player mark, the latency of actions began to become much more noticeable, taking several seconds up to 600 players and 10 plus seconds up near the 1000 player mark, basically making the game unplayable. So, and we had plenty of uh, fans here uh, that were playing Star Citizen at the time that were reporting in and let us let us know during last week's show, and it was really interesting to get feedback from people during those tests. I, I like the fact that they're they're pushing the boundaries and they're doing these player tests. I think it's important. The data that they're going to get from this is very important. So CIG was able to push the system to some limit in this early test, allowing them to get all the data they needed within just six hours but we can see very clear improvement to what was shown earlier this year regarding latency. This helps them massage dynamic server meshing. This helps them massage the system. This, the, the, they'll, get, they'll get to see the data, how it interacts, uh, and they'll, they'll continue working on the, the network engineering portion of the coding. So this is this is exactly what needs to happen. And a massive improvement to server tick Aether, rate. Aether's in one right now. They're doing more. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm applauding all of our fans here that are actually doing these tests. Man. I think that's great over non-server mesh game states that we are currently playing in in 324. And luckily breaking this system was the whole point of the tests. So I look forward to hearing back from them, hopefully pretty quickly, what this means for them going forward. There's clearly still a ton of work that needs to be done for server meshing to scale beyond just marginal bumps in player counts and game stability. The fact that these are the forefront most important topics in Star Citizen's development right now should be a huge plus to many players though. And while it's frustrating that the name of the game is still waiting at this point, I'm very happy to know that server meshing is finally in wider testing, and the road to more stability in Star Citizen is actually a major focus. As it should be. I mean, we should be very happy that we're at this point. This is a very important point in the project. They are working on the most important piece of tech right now, and they know it. They know it. They know they're up against the wall. They know they need to solve these issues. They know it because they want to bring more people in with longer play times, more concurrency. And like Space Tomato said, you're starting to see that. You're starting to see that, which is, which is good news when you can keep your gamer, place, uh, gamer base in a place in an alpha and keep their asses in the seat. That is not easy to do on a game that's breaking all the time. But the point is, is that it has to break. It has to continually break so they can find all the cracks, all the fractures, all the parts and pieces that aren't going together and work on it. That's the work. That's where the work is done. We break it, they continually fix it. That is exactly the process. Every time we bitch about something, I hope people are reporting these things. I hope every issue you've got, if you don't see it as a bug, list it as a bug. You got an issue, list it as a bug. As long as it is an actual bug. <laughs> Can you imagine? You're going to get a whole bunch of new bugs about when, en when engineering gets introduced and like the ships aren't working because of the actual game design and people are going to start submitting bug reports that, that the ships are broken and the, the game... That it's the game, oh my god. I feel so, so bad for all the Cloud Imperium employees that are going to have to deal with those additional bug reports. It's going to be nuts. This is a very important time for the game. And while there continues to be turbulence in the development, we've never been closer to actually seeing the goal of static server meshing achieved. Hopefully, this is the first step towards proper stability in the game and a real expansion into an MMO. But it, what does it, that road look like? Will it be 4.1, 4.2, or even further down the line in 4.4 that we really start to see the overall state of the game improve? Or do you think the stability of the game will just never take a step up? It, it has to. It has to. Or it fails. Full stop. Let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments, and if you'd like to continue following the development of the game, getting high quality news and opinions, consider subscribing here. And if you want more along- If it doesn't, and it continues on in this state, in a forever state of no stability, it'll fail. They can only go so long before the money stops pouring in. 
they can only go so long. What what is that point? I can tell you right now, I think within the next year or two that you're going to see revenues start to plateau and go down. And like I said uh, a week or two ago, this is normal. These are the phases of a fucking business cycle. This is what happens. Shoots up, super successful, lots of growth, plateaus, goes down. Every time it goes down, they got to cut off the fluff. They got to become leaner and meaner. They build a lot more. The pressure's on. The building intensifies. Boom. Another growth cycle. That's just the way it is. So I've seen this a lot of times. I've seen this a lot of times. But at this particular point in our journey, we had a very important juncture. This is the real shit. This is the dynamic server meshing. This is getting us what it what does not exist. This is they are pioneering their way to create new tech. We've seen the baby format of it at last Citizen Con. And now they're starting to implement testing with players, trying to break it, they're trying to look how replication layers are interacting. They're trying to see exactly what's going on with the data, how it's transferring, where it's where it's lagging behind, where they're having issues. They're able to see it because you guys are going in there and you're pushing it to the limits, which is great. They need that. They need the stress fractures. They got to see exactly where everything's going so that they can go in there and they can patch it up and continue to work on this tech. They're massaging it and it's going to take a long time. So it's going to take it. it, I wouldn't be surprised to see this last a long time, a very long time. If they come out with a version that offers some type of stability, I will be impressed anytime soon within the first quarter of next year or second quarter of next year, if they get a functioning server mesh that actually gives me the stability, a fraction of the stability I want, where it actually upgrades itself from its current format, I will consider that very positive. I will say that work is getting done the way that it needs to. If I see that lag behind and I see it go into the the back half of next year, I will be upset. That's That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. I'm looking at the macro. I'm looking at the macro. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right. Long form content like feature deep dives and podcasts, like my most recent episode bringing Avenger 1 on to talk about master modes and the flight model in Star Citizen. Check out my second channel. I would have liked to see Space Tomato with both Avenger 1 and Buzzcut Psycho. I want him to see that happen. I want to hear these two hash it out. But I would say this, like I said at the Inside Star Citizen Review, big picture, flight models always change. So kind of the the arguments between Avenger 1 and Buzzcut Psycho are moot. It's a moot point for me. I said this on the Inside Star Citizen Review. I'm just stepping back and realizing I've seen like four to five changes on the flight cycle in the time I've been in this project. And I can guarantee you it will change again. So this whole Master Modes, you know, drama debate... It's going to change again. You know, I mean, big picture, that's, that's what it is. Those are the facts. But uh, quite interesting because, you know, I would like to see Avenger 1 and Buzzcut Psycho just for pure entertainment. (laughs) Just go at it. (laughs) Maybe cook myself up a a nice uh, lunch or something and watch Space Potato moderate Avenger 1 and, uh, and Buzzcut Psycho, that would be entertaining for me. Channel Space Tomato 2. Otherwise, thank you for checking out this quick news update. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next. I don't know, I was watching, I was watching, last week Limitless, Limitless says only if they can keep it civilized. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if that would happen. What's up, John? Did you hear the the highlight last week, Limitless, where Buzzcut was talking to a developer and uh, <laughs> he went off on the developer? It was it was quite crazy, man. He's very aptly named. He's very aptly named. All right, Space Tomato, way to go, bro. Uh, you know, hey, big picture, man. Big picture. <laughs>